In this video, we're gonna work on improving that horizontal scrollable row that we worked on in the previous video. And more specifically, we're going to improve the look of the chips that we added in the previous video because they look very, very ugly. You know, the horizontal scrolling functionality is there, but the chips just don't look good. So this is the finished version of the app. This is what they should look like, and this is what they are going to look like by the end of this course. You know, you click on them, they they kind of highlight that gray color so that we know that they, that one was selected. It gets inputted in the search, and that search gets executed. It looks pretty nice. But currently what we have is here, let me change the app over. Currently what we have is something like this. We have this toolbar that you can't even really tell where the chips are. It does scroll horizontally, but it looks very ugly. Also, when you click, nothing happens, no search is executed they're not highlighted so in this video we're going to work on improving this so it should look a lot more like the finished version of the app by the end of this video we're going to start over in our components package i'm going to expand this where our recipe card is we're going to create another composable so right click on here go to new kotlin file and call this food category chip so this will be the composable that we inflate for each like kind of list item or each category that we're displaying in that toolbar so let's annotate this with at composable. You guys should be quite familiar with this by now. Food category chip will be the name. The constructor arguments or the function arguments will be the category. So that'll be a string. And then the, the, the search function that gets executed when those that category is clicked. So I'll say on execute search and that will be a function uh, for now this will return this will return nothing but for now it's actually going to take a string so we're going to pass the selected category through that function when it's executed later in the finished version of the app this is going to be kept in the view model so this will be an empty function but for now we're going to pass the string just to kind of you know get this working then we'll refine it later so as far as i know right now with jetpack compose there's no like pre-built you know chip or chip ui widget like there is in the material design library for those of you who aren't aware the material design library contains a, a chip widget that actually looks pretty good it's like pre-built but compose again i don't think has anything like that right now i expect them to probably create something because a chip is something very common that people use all the time but you know as you'll see here with compose it's very simple to just build your own so we're going to build our own we're going to be using a surface because a surface is one of the composables that, that allows you to put elevation on it so i'm going to use a surface like we've done before do modifier padding and do end equals 8.dp so the only padding is going on the end because if you take a look at the finished version of the app we just want to have some space between each of the chips so that padding on the end will help space them out that's why i'm putting padding on the end here so make sure to get that import and now move on to the next attribute here. So of course we need some elevation. I'll do 8dp of elevation. Now we want to round the corners a little bit. So I'm gonna do material uh, theme, whoops, material theme dot shapes dot medium. There is a large size, which we will be using the large size probably in the you know finished product of the application. But currently in the material theme, it doesn't come default with a large. So we have to wait till later till we customize it. So I'm gonna be using medium for now. So now color will be the material theme dot colors dot primary. And that will be our kind of top level composable that contains our, our chips. I wish that they would stop spamming me with these updates. I get it. I'm supposed to update the Kotlin version. I understand. You've already told me that 10 times today. Okay, so inside the surface, we're going to create a row. This row will first have a modifier, and this modifier will have a clickable attribute onto it. And inside this clickable, we're going to call on execute search. So on execute search and then pass the category as input to that string. So again, this is uh, this will change in the finished version of the app. I'm not going to be passing the search query, you know, as a string through this. We're just going to call execute search and that thing should already exist in the view model later on. But for now, we're just trying to get this working, just trying to, you know, get started. So I'm going to uh, add the clickable interface and or the clickable modifier and click that to execute the search. Now inside the row, I'm gonna create a text composable. Inside this text composable, we will of course have some text. That will be the category. We're gonna have some styling, material theme, dot typography, dot body number two. Body number two is a little bit smaller than body number one. Do color equals color dot white. So this is the first time I'm not accessing the material theme. I'm just using a color of white, which you'll see why later on. And then modifier equals modifier dot padding. And let's do ADP of padding all the way around. 
Now let's go back to recipe list fragment and let's add this new food category chip to our scrollable row and also scroll up top to the surface and I wanna change the color of this. Later when we actually do the theming, I will be referencing the material theme for this, but for now, um, it just looks too ugly. So I'm gonna change this to white and this will improve the look a lot. So now scroll down to our scrollable row and when we loop through the categories and we have our text here, we wanna change this to a food category chip. And of course we need to change these attributes. The category will be category, um, category dot value. So now I can remove all of these and the only other attribute we need is on execute search. Open this up and pass view model dot on query changed and change it to whatever that category is. And then also we want to execute the search. So view model dot new search and then pass that query. So again, I said this earlier that we're going to be, you know, we don't, later we won't need to pass the category as an argument here. That's just gonna be kept inside of the view model. But for now, we're just like getting this to work. So we're, we're changing the query, we're executing the search in two lines. Later, this will be condensed down to like one line. All right, so let's, uh, let's run this and take a look and see if this improved the look of our scrollable row. Okay, so this looks a lot better. This definitely looks a lot better. We have our, you know, horizontal row here. You can pretty clearly see the chips defined. The chips are a different color. The toolbar is white. I think the white toolbar is really what made the big difference here. So we're headed in the right direction. Also, if I click on these, it does execute the search, which is good. It changes the value up here, but there's a couple shortcomings still. Like when I click on one of these, this doesn't change color. Like this should be highlighted or like turned gray or something to know that, yes, I clicked on that one. Also, if I scroll all the way to the end and say I click on donut here, what happens when I rotate the screen? So if I rotate the screen, let's see what happens. So that looks fine in the horizontal view, but notice that the chips occupy or don't even occupy the whole width. So let's rotate back now and take a look and see what that looks like. So what I want you to notice here is that the scroll position was not maintained. Remember we were at donut, but after I rotated twice, it took me back to the beginning of the list. So there's two kind of shortcomings here. Number one is when I click on it, it doesn't highlight. And number two is if I scroll to the end of the list, this position should be maintained, especially if I clicked on donut. If I clicked on donut, this is gonna be highlighted. And if I rotate it, I expect it to still be in view. So those are the two shortcomings that we're gonna be working on in the next video. Other than that, it looks a lot better and it's gonna continue to look better and better, especially when we get to the theming part of this of this course, when we customize the material theme, you know, give uh, enable the ability to toggle between light and dark theme, all of that, uh, you know, Jetpack Compose theming stuff really improves the look of the application. By the way, Merry Christmas today or, or Happy Christmas, or if you don't celebrate Christmas, then never mind, but whatever thing you're celebrating, if you're celebrating, have a good day today. Today should be Christmas. I recorded this. I pre-recorded it so that it should be released on Christmas. So unless something crazy went wrong or something bad happened to me, then you should be seeing this on Christmas. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to go down there and leave me some Christmas engagement. Leave me some special Christmas likes. Maybe share it on whatever, you know, whatever forum or whatever community group community you're part of. If you go to school, you know, share it with the rest of your students and say, Merry Christmas. You're welcome. Here's the best, you know, Android courses you'll ever see in the world. Give them the gift of an education from Mitch. That's the best gift you could ever give somebody. So as always, thanks for watching. Have a good day. As I said, Merry Christmas, Happy Christmas, whatever the way you say it is. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow on Boxing Day.